Hi, my name is Evandro. Uh, I'm an international cardiologist here in Brazil. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the ABC organizers for the kind invitation. It's a great pleasure to participate in this very special meeting. Okay. Without further delay, I'd like to start my talk, which is about techniques and advanced maneuvers for difficult side brain access. Um, I have no disclosures regarding this presentation. I would like to start highlighting the importance of the good pot technique, uh, which is crucial to open the struts across the side branch ostium, and this technique may facilitate side brain preservation. This is an example of how pot can help in open or reaccessing the side branch during verification PCI. This patient had a proximal LAD severe stenosis with a big septal involvement, and after the main vessel stenting, the the first septal went down and the patient starts complaining of chest pain and start to have tachycardia and we are not able to wire the first septal. Then we decide to perform the pot maneuver just close to the uh, to the septal that went down and after this maneuver we we could recover uh, the septal flow and reaccess and perform uh, balloon angioplasty and we got this nice result. These are these are the common pro problems that we find in such situations of steep angulated side branches. It's difficult to advance the wire in the opposite direction of the main branch because of the natural tendency of the wire to keep going towards the main branch. And as as we have more tortuosity and calcification, we have loss of torque response and loss of support due to high angulation and due to this proximal tortuosity. So the wires become not to respond well. So these are two important uh, wire bending wire shapes to access difficult and angulated side branch, the double band curve and the progressive curve, as you can see here. So this is an example of uh, multi-vessel PCI. We start doing the RCA, which was CTO. And after that, we went for the left main and LED with diffuse disease. And we actually plan to, to work as fast as we can. It was the last case of the day. We start with provisional approach and we didn't put the wire on this diagonal branch. And what happened is, after standing from left main to LAD, we got a TME2 flow on the diagonal branch. We had no wire on it. And after a few minutes, uh, the flow was getting worse. And finally, we lost the side branch. The patient has ST elevation, chest pain, tachycardia. And what we did, we get, this is our approach for this kind of side branch acute occlusion. We start dealing with wires. We choose non-polymeric work cost wires. Then we change for polymeric work cost. Then we change to polymeric uh, tapered wires and some specialty wires. Uh, these are some options of these wires. We start with a regular three to four millimeter curve. This case was easily solved using the Boston fighter wire, which actually was very gently uh, manipulated to to seek the channel and through the struts and quick easy wire and do balloon and angioplasty and restore. Uh, this is the final result with the flow restoration on the diagonal branch. These are um, some advanced solutions for side branch wiring in challenging anatomies that I would like to share with you. Some of them that may help in difficult situations. You, for the sake of time, I'll show a couple of these solutions for you. First of all, the use of double lumen catheters. Uh, in my country, in Brazil, there are two double lumen catheters available. The Sasuke from Asahi, which is a, a very uh, low profile double lumen catheter with uh, the side port very close to the tip. and there's a different one called Twin Pass, Twin Pass from Teleflex, and this is a little bit bulky microcatheter, and the side port is a little bit far from the tip of the microcatheter. Example from a more complex case, a CTO case with distal cap involved with bifurcation, and after the retrograde and bit bidirectional approach for recanalization, we had to deal with a bifurcation, and we did a, a mini crush, and we had a very difficult time to rewrite the wire through the side brain struts, and we used the Twin Pass double lumen catheter to, with a whisper wire to access through the distorts of the side branch and achieve a, re a good uh, result. This is the important technique, the reverse wiring technique, which is very important to know it. Uh, it can help in some situations. These are the best uh, bifur uh, bifurcation angles with a Carina angle more than 90 degrees and the takeoff angle less than 90 degrees. This is the best scenario for the reverse wiring technique, uh, which consists in, in an advancement of the hairpin shape wire and with the gentle pullback, we do the reverse winding of the unweighted side branch. This is the classical description that was published in CCI in 2007, which the hairpin-shaped wire is advanced through the 
through the toolkit. Nowadays, we changed this technique for a new iteration, which is which called Streamline Reverse Wiring Technique. And this, this is a very interesting technique. Uh, I wrote uh, something about it in this, this article. You can seek for this technique here. I'll show you that the, the main difference is that we form the hairpin shape inside the coronary tree. We don't need it to advance it uh, alongside the coronary. So this is an example of LED, diagonal bifurcation, calcified. We we try to advance it up. Uh, IVOS catheter, it won't cross. We did rotulation and we start uh, the IVOS evaluation. A lot of calcium uh, protruding to the lumen, some nodule calcium and centric calcium. And we had uh, a hard time to wire the, the diagonal. Actually, we couldn't wire it with, with main wires in different shapes. And we had a uh, double lumen catheter to the system. And even with double lumen catheter, we could not uh, wire the side branch. So we changed it for the reverse wiring streamlined reverse wiring technique, which consists in, in Selecting a distal side branch, in this case a septal branch, and pushing and pushing the double lumen catheter to actually form the RP shape wire inside the coronary. And after that, with gentle movements of pullback, the double lumen catheter, we would engage the side branch ostium in the reverse fashion and proceed with the reverse wiring technique, which you can see here. Gentle, gentle movements and the wire goes in the side branch. And after that, side branch was secured. And we proceed with uh, the whole stenting technique. In this case, it was a DK crush with some high was optimization. We achieved a final, uh, this very nice result. And when nothing works, we have to think outside the box. This is an example of LED diagonal bifurcation, a very acute retroflex uh, angle of the side branch. We tried our best to manage it, uh, but we cannot wire the side branch during this acute and retroflex angulation. And after 30 minutes of attempts to wire main operators, main wires, main shapes of the wire reshaping, uh, we decided to move to a different technique. We use a, a non-conventional microcatheter, a microcatheter that is uh, used in neurology, neurointervention. So it's a shapeable microcatheter. We use a repeat can to shape this microcatheter. We, we didn't have the pre-shaped microcatheter like Supercross at that time. So we decided to shape our, our, our own microcatheter uh, with a very acute shape. We delivered the microcatheter with a workhorse wire and we pull back the wire and, and we did some kind of very gentle micro catheterization of the side branch, like XB shape, Vada shape, we could engage the, the ostrom of the side branch and we gentle proceed with the wiring of the side branch. With, uh, this is Echelon 10 microcatheter, this is the name of the microcatheter, this is a filter FC wire, and the filter just go very smoothly through the side branch, and we could advance the microcatheter and put an extra support wire, and we proceed with the double stenting with DK crush, and this is the final key balloon, and this is the final result. Thank you.